And hello, my fabulous students. This is your favorite teacher, Mr. Jacobson. I am excited to be with you today. Today, we're going to discuss in the AP US history curriculum the long term effects of discovering the Americas. So now we have the Spaniards, they've landed, they've interacted and they're enacting change. So what are those long-term changes or long-term effects that have come as a result? So with that said, let us begin. So one of the biggest changes that occurs due to the discovering of the Americas by the Spaniards is the Columbian Exchange. And the Columbian Exchange is simply uh, once the Spanish were able to dominate the uh, Americas and all the resources, then you have this massive exchange going on with things from Europe coming to America and things from America going to Europe. So you have things from Europe coming to America like sugarcane, bluegrass, you got beasts of burden like horses and oxen and cattle and other kind of animals that they didn't have in the Americas beforehand. In fact, the the largest, most domesticated animal that they had in the Americas was, was the llama. So they didn't, and llama's not very big, so they didn't have a lot of beasts of burden that could do some heavy lifting. So their attitude towards animals in the Americas is very different than that in the uh, Europe and, and the old world. Um, you have the wheel coming over, you got steel, you got guns, and unfortunately you also have disease coming over, mainly measles and smallpox. To the Amer uh, from the Americas to Europe, you got new, uh, new things like beans, corn, sweet and white potatoes, tomatoes, tobacco, <laughs> syphilis, squash. And so you have this massive exchanging happening, which is going to spike the population of the entire world because mainly because of corn and potatoes um, which will which will be a, a great blessing to uh, to Europe Africa and Asia so here's just a, a picture if you like visuals just to sort of get a, a better idea of what exactly the Columbian Exchange did what was going over from the old world what was going coming over from the new world etc all right, we also have the rise of capitalism happening here. So with an increase in population to Europe, this also led to an increase in trade. Okay, you following me here? So Columbia Exchange happens. We got a spike in population in the world. With more people on the world, there's an increase. Uh, there's a chance to have an increase in trade, which definitely happened. Eventually, capitalism became the favored economic system with the joint stock companies paying for shipping instead of governments. If you remember before the capitalist system, there was the mercantile system or mercantilism. And that was um, that was largely controlled economy um, by governments. And the, uh, the it was the acquiring of gold and silver and, and imperialism um, is mainly in the Americas, pretty much. Now you got capitalism happening where you have like private um, businesses and you have joint stock companies who are sort of investing instead of governments and you also have laws that protect a lot of those um, businesses that are being formed so so capitalism say a bunch of ships were destroyed okay in a storm then it wasn't just one investor that lost a bunch of money, but because you have joint stock companies, you have hundreds of people all pitching in money and are, are looking for an investment back, right? Then losing all those ships, I mean, it would be, it'd be a hard hit, but it wouldn't be a devastating hit that could probably, you know, destroy your, your, your entire financial future. Um, so joint stock companies just made it, I guess, less intimidating to invest. You also had laws that protected investors so that they only lost what they put into the investment. They couldn't lose their house or anything else. If you put 50000 in, that's what you can lose. Nothing more. That's it. So again, it's just these ideas that promote people to, 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 to 
invest in the economy, especially with this new idea of capitalism that became quite popular. Um, you also have new land in the Americas, which meant there were new opportunities economically, especially in the cash crop industry like tobacco, but more importantly, sugarcane. So we also have new systems of labor that happen as a, re as a consequence or a result of, uh, of discovering the Americas. Uh, you have Hernan Cortez, Francisco Pizarro. They're, go they're going to dominate and control the Aztec and the Inca. They're going to take those empires and make them no more. And that would just give the Spanish more power and more dominion over the vast amount of resources that were found in the Americas. So by acquiring all this land in the Americas, it's going to result in a demand for labor. You got all this land, you have all this potential to make money, so now they're going to be like, well, we got to get people to work on this. So the first thing they wanted to do was they started making natives in the Americas. Um, they had them working on them and, and working on cash crops and in silver mines. Um, they even created an encomienda system which uh, was there. It originally was supposed to be like, okay, so, you know, if you were on the encomienda, then the Spanish will promise to protect you from any of the your enemies or whatever, or any, any neighbors that, that may, neighboring tribes that may want to harm you or whatever, the Spanish will protect you. Uh, however, you have to work on there, and usually working meant, you know, hard back-breaking work. Um, they would also teach them Christianity on encomienda systems, and they would even learn the language of Spanish, uh, which I'm sure many natives thought, you know, I guess this is the way things are going, so I should learn Spanish. Um, the, the natives, you know, they were forced to work, but because of disease and because of their, their uh, lack of immunity to these diseases, then it was just, they were dying, you know, and, and also they just, their comp the body composition wasn't very... Um, suited for heavy back-breaking kind of work and you also have natives who know the land really well and can blend in pretty easily so they would enslave them but then they would get just disappear because they knew the layout of the land and they had a lot of friends that could help them escape and disappear forever kind of thing right so it was really hard to enslave these people in any kind of uh, sure fashion if you will so, um, so those were the problems with, um, with the natives of the Americas uh, and their enslavement. So as a result of disease and not being able to um, keep their, their, their natives enslaved because they were escaping, um, there, was, there was a new um, a group of people that had received a lot of contact from Europe from Portugal because Prince Henry's School of Navigation started building trading posts along the African coast and building relationships with a lot of these chiefs and tribes, right? So then they started to import Africans over to work in harvesting the cash crops like sugar, etc. And this became known as the slave trade. Um, and the Spanish imported uh, people under the asiento system, which required colonists to pay a tax to the Spanish king on each slave they imported to the Americas. You got 10 to 15 um, percent that were transported across the Atlantic Ocean. They died, and that was known as the Middle Passage. We have a picture here that kind of gives you a somewhat idea of what it may have looked like. It was probably a lot more brutal, personally. Um, here, I mean, they're they're like being able to see, you know, they're they're out in the open, you know. There's the sky. I don't think. I mean, they did let them come to the deck for a little bit, but I mean, mainly they were down in the hold area, which wasn't very good. I mean, you couldn't even stand. I think it was like five feet tall in the hold area, so they couldn't even stand up properly, and they were just pushing like sardines, just a a, a terrible fate. Uh, through it all, African culture endured and caused change in the Americas in music, religion, food, etc., which we'll talk a little later. So the Spanish coming over to the Americas created a whole new caste system or known as the Casta system. And uh, this isn't new to people who took AP uh, world history. 
but just as a, a recap, so we have a new like class system that develops as a result of the Spanish interacting with the Americas, uh, known as the Casa system. You got the Peninsulares, we got the uh, Criollos or the Creoles, okay, and these are the descendants of the Peninsulares. You have Mestizo and you have Mulatto, and anyway, I have them here. I have it also in this in this uh, um, diagram here as well, which I think is, is very good. All right, so the Spanish treatment of the Native Americans. Um, so there's kind of like a love-hate relationship that kind of goes on there. There are some Spanish that were like, hey, you know, we should treat them nice, and, you know, these are human beings. And there are some Spanish who believe less than human beings. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see how, how it all kind of shapes up. But th the bottom line is, is that I, the, the Spanish kind of saw the natives of the Americas as being somewhat inferior. And so if you're inferior and you're better than them, then naturally you should just exploit them. So you have Bartolome de las Casas. He originally kind of had this idea. He even owned some, some, um, some slaves for a while. Um, however, he's a Catholic priest. He starts, in his later years, starts to realize that, you know, these are actually human beings and, and we can't treat them the way that we have been. So he even tries to persuade the Spanish king to, to create laws that protects them. These are known as the new laws of 1542. And the king passed it for a while, but event you know and the law was supposed to end like the encomienda system and just slavery in general but there's just too much pressure by the aristocracy in spain on the king and the king eventually repealed those laws and kind of like the counterpart to uh bartolome we have juan Ginez de sopulveda and uh he is kind of like the anti-Bartolome in that he believes not only should the Indians be uh, exploited and, and enslaved, but it's okay because they're less than human, is his attitude. And so you got a lot of these conflicting ideas in Spain and in Europe that are going around, and it's kind of, you know, you kind of wonder which one is going to prevail in the end. So the treatment of the Americas with the, the, the English and the French. So the English, they didn't settle where like large empires controlled like the Spanish did, right? So the English settled in places that were less controlled by other tribes. Um, the English usually brought their families over. If you're bringing your family over, then you're not looking to marry uh, a native as well, right? And so the English kind of kept more to themselves. Uh, the English were able to just sort of, you know, they created trade ties with the Native Americas. And they even coexisted somewhat. But there wasn't like an intermarrying that went on. And and maybe one of the reasons was because, you know, deep down inside, perhaps the English kind of saw the Indians as savage. I mean, they weren't as civilized as, you know, the the, the English saw themselves with the, the height of, of the Industrial Revolution, you know, just about ready to take into effect and all the massive trading that's been going on. Um, so it, you can kind of see, you know, the, the Indians lived a very different life than what the English believed life should be, right? Their attitude towards land was very different. The Indians believed land is something to kind of be shared communal. And, and you know, the European view of land, and I'd even say probably as far as, you know, the old world view of land is land is something that can be used to, to get rich and exploit. Um, and then in France, you know, you have French coming over to the Americas, but they're not really get going there to necessarily settle. They're going there because they're going for trading opportunities, right? Um, so they're kind of less of a threat, if you will, than the English because uh, the French were going over to trade with the natives, uh, Native Americans, and, uh, and and so they were building those trading relationships, but they weren't sticking around and raising families and starting to occupy uh, land in, in that kind of threading manner, right? So the French are going to build trading posts along the St. Lawrence River, Great Lakes, Mississippi River, 
uh, they're going to look for you know those beaver pelts and other furs and trade their goods with with the uh, the Native Americans. Um, and even some of them will, will marry uh, some some natives as well as the trappers that come over, unlike the English. And then the role of Africans in America. So we so they kind of so we got we got the Europeans right. We got the um, the natives, and these are two cultures that sort of come together. And then we have a third culture that comes together, and they're kind of forced to come right. So so we have forced slavery happening where they're compelled to come nevertheless we do have a third tradition and culture that comes with it because of african influence we got rice that starts to come over to the americas um, rice becomes important grain in like south carolina and louisiana um, you got the anyway so you, you got things like gumbo right that start to emerge you got musical rhythm and style with the banjo being closely associated with southeastern United States. I mean, here in this picture, this was created in the early 1800s. And here you have this gentleman here who is an African, I'm assuming he's an African slave, but he's got a banjo on his knee, right? And so it's believed that the banjo has very strong ties to African tradition. And so Europeans, you know, they would justify their 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 constant um, their constant barrage of bringing slaves, African slaves, over to the Americas by using the Bible. They would even argue that Africans are bio biologically inferior, and this is similar to Juan Hines de Sepulveda um, and his argument against the Native Americans, right? And so, uh, anyway, so, so that's all we're going to talk about today. I just want to talk about the major consequences, the long-term effects that happen, which are going to further help us understand the, uh, the, 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 um, the things that will happen in the next couple of webcasts as a result. Because this is, this is where it all begins, right? The Spanish interact, and uh, the English come over, and the French come over, and that's enacting a lot of change, which will get more change and more change. So... Go ahead and write that summary, and I look forward to discussing this with you when we return. Thanks.